Today I have lots of beautiful sunflower DIYs for you. Keep watching. I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Okay, we're gonna start off with some ribbon from the Dollar Tree. These are all from the Dollar Tree. I have a pretty gold satin and then some wired ribbons. I got these from the thrift store, but you can get some similar to it at Dollar Tree and at other stores. They're just wall adhesives. And then I have a tag sign that I got from Dollar Tree that I stripped down. I had used it before and I stripped it down and I'm going to use it again. I didn't want to paint the background because I actually like the brown on this. So I'm just going to place these around here and there. Some of these stickers come separate from their leaves and some of them are attached. So you'll kind of see me pulling those apart and adding some different sizes in different places. And I do have some that are going to overlap on the sides. If you know anything about sunflowers, you know that they like to face the sun. So I'm trying to put them all sort of facing in the same direction. Like they're looking for the light. Okay, so just press that down and I'm just going to push it down over the edges and I will um, sand that off at some point. Again, overlapping here, here and there. Just seems to give it a little more dimension when you do it this way. And this almost looks like there's another flower somewhere else. Like the pattern continues. Now if you want to seal this, you can use any type of Mod Podge that you like. And I'm looking at some options here. We could trim this out with some ribbon on the bottom if we wanted to. And I'm going to use this to make a bow. So I'm measuring 16 inches. I'm crossing this bow over. This is wired ribbon. You can get it at Dollar Tree pretty much all the time. Uh, at my stores anyway. So hopefully you can find it. It's really pretty. And you're just going to cross it over and then pinch it up in the middle. And that starts the base of your bow. Very simple. It's easy to adjust at this point before you have it tied off or wired off. You can adjust the length of your tails. And you can also adjust them just by trimming it up at, at a later point if you like. I'm going to start with this bigger bow on the bottom. It's the biggest, um, it's the biggest or widest ribbon, so we're going to use that on the bottom. And I'm just going to use some jute, tie that off in the middle. I'm going to leave my jute long so that I can continue to attach the other layers of bow on top. So here's our next layer. We're going to do the same process with the silk. It's a little bit slippery. It's a little bit uh, more difficult to work with because it tries to crawl out of your fingers. Just pinch it tightly and then you're going to lay that down on top and go ahead and tie that one on. Once you get used to doing it this way, you, you, don't, you don't have to worry about your ribbons getting away from you. That jute is kind of rough and it will, it'll hold everything where it needs to be. You can always reinforce that with hot glue if you like, or you can use floral wire. Then we're going to top it off with this one. And you can get this one almost all year long too, I believe, at Dollar Tree. Then I'm going to, after I tie it, I'm going to wrap it around to the back, tie it again because I want everything to stay where it is supposed to be, and go ahead and start fluffing that out and moving those loops around where I want them. And then we're going to trim up the tails. I am just going to put these on a slant rather than dovetailing them. Now you can do it any way you want to, but it looks more finished to me if you do some type of a intentional cut. But you can leave it, you know, squared if you like it that way. Certainly whatever you like, whatever looks good to you. So now we got this chunky little bow, very rustic looking, and we're going to go ahead and add it. I'm going to feed one piece of that jute through the hole and then one over the top and tie that in place. I have left the original hanger there. I found that if you just do a couple of little loops with the jute, a couple of little knots, that it'll stay. But you can put hot glue on there if you want to. 
So here is my little hanger, and I was trying to decide if I wanted the knot hidden or on top, but I like it on top. It's more rustic, and you know that's my style, I like the rustic. So I'm gonna take this cute little mini sunflower, and this was thrifted. I got it at the thrift store. You can certainly use the ones from Dollar Tree. And just place that right in the middle. I'm thinking this would look really cute too on a clipboard. Dollar Tree has the little clipboards that are the, the brown color, that natural looking, almost like a cardboard box look. They have those and you could probably get away with doing it that way too. All right, I'm gonna take some of this curved lace trim Pulling on the pieces of thread is going to break that line so that it'll lay a little bit flatter as that's what I'm going to do because I want it to lay flat on the bottom. I'm going to add some glue and then place that right along the bottom. So if you didn't want to use this step, you wouldn't have to, but I feel like it is more rustic if you don't add it. It is more cottage if you do add it. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm trying to bring a little more cottage into my home, a little more feminine, and this seems to do the trick. It works for me. Then I'm gonna layer down this satin gold ribbon. It's a beautiful shade. It's a yellowy gold, like a wheat color. I'm gonna wrap it around the back and just tack it down. Very simple. I don't want anything to unravel or come apart. So this is just gonna give it a nice little finished look. All right, and because this has little holes in it and you can see right through it, I'm going to just put the glue right at the edge so that no glue comes bubbling through there. And you can see that gold right through the ribbon. I think that's a nice little surprise touch And then you just press it down to make sure that it's got a good grip on that glue. And wrap it around the back and add a little hot glue. It's storming outside if y'all hear that thunder. Okay, then we're gonna just turn it over and do a little fluffing because we mashed our bow. And there's our pretty little cottage sunflower sign. Cottage sunflower tag sign. I hope you like this one. Pretty simple to do. And here it is hanging up so you can see how it looks. Our next project, we're gonna use some wired ribbon. This is plaid, it came from the thrift store, but I think it came from Hobby Lobby. Then I'm gonna use some more thrifted thread. This is not thread, ribbon. Um, some sheer ribbon and then I have some more ribbon on the side. Gonna use this decorative paper, a hello sign, and then this came from the Dollar Tree. So this is a round from the Dollar Tree. I've got some gold paint here that matches the inside of that sunflower. These are the same stickers that we used on the previous project. And we're gonna carry this over into this project, which is gonna save us a lot of money. So the yellow on the hello sign is not quite the color that I want. I want it to be a little more mustardy, a little more warm for fall. So I'm just gonna go in here and follow that same painted area, the same shaded area, and go over that. And there's a little crack underneath the L. It's just a surface crack, but I do fill that in with some paint, and you can barely see it. And this was thrifted. You know, sometimes you have to, other people overlook things that appear to be damaged, but it's surface damage. So lucky for me, I know how to fix those things, and I grab them up when nobody else will. So I just go on and do that, and I did let that dry and add one more coat afterwards. Take the tag off, then clean it up a little bit, and I'm just using a little bit of sandpaper to just buff that out a bit. Then I'm gonna take my, this is just decorative paper, I'm gonna take this, and I'm gonna trace it under my round. I'm gonna take my scissors and then trim that up. We're going to make a nice, big, almost a semicircle, but actually bigger than a semicircle. And we're gonna use this for the bottom part of our sign. 
Again, no painting necessary. I like the brown that's on there. We're going to leave it just like that. So I'm going to use just a glue stick. Use whatever you have. Jot certainly works great. Um, you can use Mod Podge if that is your adhesive of choice. But we're going to use this because this is what I had by me and it works quickly. So for purposes of video tutorial, this is what I've got. I'm just going to place it down and make sure that it's where it needs to be and take my wooden ruler and just press out any bubble that might be there or any wrinkle. And fortunately enough, there were none. I'm going to start removing my stickers here. I was so happy to find these at Goodwill. I have like six sheets of it. Really nice. And the, um, the image is beautiful. I'm just going to start adding this on here. I'm going to overlap it onto the polka dot part and I'm going to put some on the top part. You can put as many or as little as you like. You can also take your stickers and put them on the bottom section as well if that's what you want to do. But I'm going to do something different on the bottom. So this time I wasn't as concerned about which way my flowers were facing. I just wanted to get them on there. Then I'm going to take my sanding block. You can see that I have some that needs to be trimmed. And I'm just going to go downwards and away. Down and away and just buff off that trim that doesn't need to be there. I also like that it's given that white edge, gives it a little more detail. It's just a little more rustic. This is so easy to do and you get the perfect edge. If you don't like that the white is showing there, you can always take some antiquing wax and fix that. I'm going to do the same thing on my flowers that are overlapping here. Then I'm just going to kind of scratch up the surface of those so they're not so shiny. They're a little more matte and they look like they fit a little better into the aesthetic on the sign. I'm just going to go over the edge of that paper where it meets the board too. Now that looks a lot better to me. It's subtle, but it works for me. So after everything is dry, we're going to decide exactly where we want to put the little sign. You can use the metal signs from Dollar Tree if you like and paint those. Okay, so let me show you how to make the bow that we're going to make. So, I'm going to use 18 inches of ribbon. I'm going to go over to the mark that I showed you, the 10 inches, and then I'm going to loop over. This doesn't have, uh, it's a pattern on both sides, so you don't have to be real concerned about twisting the ribbon. I'm going to lay it down, and we're going to do 6 inch loops. You can see here that that made a 6 inch loop. I'm going to go down the length of the ribbon pinch it in the middle and just check to make sure that we have another six inch loop. See that one is on the other side. I'm going to take another one for this side, pinch it up, make sure that it's the right measurement. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So we have four loops and two tails. So we're going to just pinch this in the middle with a clamp and set it aside. We're going to do the same thing with the Dollar Tree ribbon with the black polka dots. Pinch it up at 10. This time we have to twist because the pattern is only on one side. We're going to do 5 inches for this one because we want it to be a little smaller. So we pinched and we're going to twist. When you twist it, it puts your pattern on the outside and that's what you want. So there you go, 5 inches. Then we're going to put this in here. So the polka dot ribbon, we're only going to use 2 loops. And then the same thing with this sheer green. This is wired. With the sheer green, we're going to do five inch loops, two only. And they're even. I'm just double checking. Now we're going to put this bow together. So holding everything like it was in the clamp, we're going to pinch these together. You're going to take a pipe cleaner, a piece of wire, a piece of jute, or a zip tie and clamp these together. So I did use a zip tie. I'm going to start dovetailing my ends. I hope you like that very detailed description of how to make that bow. If you do, let me know because I can certainly take more time when I'm doing bows to help you out if you feel like you need a little extra help in the bow area. 
All right, now I'm just gonna trim this up where it looks right. I always have an idea of how long I want the tails to be, but once you start fluffing out a bow, you know, you, you know, feel free to go ahead and trim everything, cut things shorter, leave things longer, whatever looks right to you, feels right to you. So that's what I'm doing with all of these. I'm giving them all a little trim and then fluff them out really good. So now it's time to fix our sign down with the lettering. Um, put the lettering on the back. Uh, I'm gonna put glue on the lettering on the back side. I'll get it out in a minute. Gotta work quickly so it doesn't dry too fast. And then flip it over, eyeball it, and put it in place. But you gotta move kind of quickly or your glue is going it's not going to grab. It's just going to dry on the back. You can use wood glue or whatever you want to use for this. E6000 if that's what you like. Oh, I used a pipe cleaner. I did not use a zip tie. My bad. Hot glue it down, and I'm just going to use one of these laundry clamps from Dollar Tree to hold it in place until it's dry. Once it's dry, go ahead and do your final little fluffing on your bow to make sure that it's exactly how you want it. I felt like it needed something else on the end, so I'm just going to take a couple of more pieces these are 10 inch pieces of this polka dot ribbon. I'm gonna put these with dovetails and then I'm gonna add them on each side of the bow. Really easy to do. My wire was sticking out a little too long on one side. <laughs> so, just go ahead and hot glue those in where they look like they make sense. I post and videos on Mondays and Thursdays at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. Okay. okay, now, Dollar Tree again. This is some Dollar Tree ribbon. I have some green and some brown burlap. I have some thrifted plaid yellow and orange ribbon. And then this one also came from Dollar Tree. It's a wide open burlap. These are thrifted sunflowers, but you can certainly get the ones at Dollar Tree. And this is a Dollar Tree wall adhesive. There's one pattern on each side, and they are really pretty. Very country vibes I'm getting from this. And this is a thrifted piece of sign that I got from Goodwill. You can use any type of plank, or you can use a long sign from Dollar Tree too. There's lots of signs uh, around the holiday times that you can get, like the elf sign and such, that are long and narrow. Just make sure that whatever sign you get, it's gonna be wide enough to fit your flowers. So I've chosen to do the double one for this sign. And this is actually going to be a, like a porch leaner. It's just a little sign that you can lean against the wall. You can put it outside and lean it against the wall or on your fireplace, mantle, or you know, even on a, a cabinet shelf or something like that. You could also put a hanger on the back if you wanted to. All right, so I'm just going to place this down. Be sure that you get out all the little white bits that are in there, um, the little sticker pieces that need to come out. Then I'm going to use this wallpaper smoother and just carefully press this down on the board. If this is something that you would choose to use outside, be sure that you get some Mod Podge or some type of a spray sealer and put that on there to protect it and keep it from peeling off. So here are two different, different types and you can use a sponge brush to put that on. But to make the video quicker, I'm gonna skip that part for now. Now I'm thinking of ways that I can decorate this sitter. And I've decided I'm going to use some jute. So I'm gonna use some hot glue, take this jute and just randomly wrap it around the bottom of the sign. Around and around we go. Where it stops, nobody knows. And I had a tangle, so I had to edit that part out. Now, we're gonna glue the back down or you can tie it whichever way you wanna do it. Gluing is a lot simpler in my opinion. And then you're gonna press that down. Protect your fingers, it is hot. Now we're going to work on the top. I intentionally left this with a big blank spot on the top because I wanted to do some type of embellishment. You know me, I've got to add a little something extra. So I'm going to layer up my ribbons. 
we're going to do brown on the bottom, the green in the middle, and then the plaid on the top. Dollar Tree has very pretty fall ribbons too that they put out every year, but we don't have any out at our stores yet, so I'm just using what I had, which is this thrifted ribbon, which looks fall enough to me. It almost looks like candy corn, but it does match the colors that are in my flower. A little hot glue, and I'm just going to secure this on the back. You could make this complete if you want, you know, if you don't want anybody to see this. I'm not selling it. Nobody's going to see it, so I'm totally cool with it looking like this. But you can certainly cover it up. I'll put some paper on the back and finish it up. Okay, since I used these in another project, they were clamped together. I'm just going to cut them apart and then start removing the leaves and trim down the stems. Also, you can use any type of sunflower that you like, but I like the color in this one. I'm going to make a little bow that's a little bit different and I don't think I've made yet on my channel. This is the easiest, one of the easiest bows you can ever make actually. I'm going to trim up some more pieces over here. These are all being cut at four inches. Some of these will be used for tails, like this, folded in half, folded in half. Then we're gonna dovetail the ends. I have three green and I have three of the silky wired yellow plaid. That's a big, 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 big description for that little ribbon, isn't it? Okay, and so in the green, we're gonna trim that. But we are not going to do that with the brown. The brown is going to be a bow and this is what you do. You're just going to put one down in the middle and crisscross make an X on top. So a minus sign and a multiplication sign all together. Pinch it up in the middle. Then you're going to use your jute and tie it off. Simplest thing ever. Once you get it in a couple of knots so that it is secure, you can go ahead and fray your edges a little bit to make it look nice and rustic. Right, so we're going to start working on the top and because the end of these leaves are kind of thick where they stick to the stem, I'm going to trim those down so they're not as bulky. They'll lay flatter and they'll be easier to work with with the glue because we're going to be slipping it underneath this ribbon. So it'll lay a lot flatter for us. We're going to try to make our life a lot easier. If we can't find joy when we craft and we're frustrated all the time, then it kind of defeats the purpose. So I like to enjoy what I'm doing. I try to make things as easy on myself as possible. So we're just tucking around the leaves wherever you may want them to go. I love the color on these particular leaves. This that bluish grayish green. I think it looks nice with the colors in that sticker. So then we're going to decide where we want to put the flowers. My stem's a little long, just gonna keep trimming while I get it where I need to. Add a little bit of glue and then tuck it in. I'm just pressing down a little bit to make sure that it doesn't fall out. And we're gonna take the next one, a little bit of hot glue. And then we're going to tuck that one in on the other side, on the underside. <laughs> yep, I think I need more coffee, girls. I really think I need more coffee today. So here's our bow. I've got my knots in it, and I'm just going to trim off what we don't need and decide where we want to add it. And I like it right here on this corner. It's the simplest little bow. We're going to offset those little tails, fold them over, push them out to the side a little bit so they look like a V, and just layer them in there, here and there, wherever it looks good. It seems like a small thing because it's such a small area on a sign, but be sure you look at it from every direction. You know, pick your sign up, look at it. Make sure that you've got plenty of dimension and that you have, you know, a nice distribution of greenery and color and that sort of thing. 
because it's going to be more pleasing to the eye when you're finished with your project. And you don't have to go back in and add a thousand things at the end. Get frustrated with yourself because it's not what you thought it was. It's your project. Make it the way you like it. So I've just decided that I needed a little more yellow in here. And I went and picked a few more pieces of scraps that I had. This is just some scrap florals that I had over there in a bucket. And I think they look nice with that. How do you like that? You could put a hanger in the back and use it as a hanging sign if you wanted to. But this is just going to be a leaner for me. See, I'm looking at it from all angles, checking it all out. Now I've put this on the side wall here so you can see what it looks like against the other backdrop. Excuse the crazy lighting in the corner. I like all of the projects because I think sunflowers are amazing. All right, here we go. going to be the easiest one. I'm going to use a thrifted milk can or some sort of a vessel. It doesn't have the handles on the side, but you know. You can certainly do this with a bucket, and you can do it with something that you find at a thrift store, at a garage sale, whatever. This is for my wall sticker set that came from Dollar Tree, and so is the sunflower. It's the other half of the set that we just used. And I'm gonna place it down on this can. I'm just deciding what length I want, how tall I want the flower to go up, if I want some greenery on it. Main thing is the flower. You can put Mod Podge on here first if you would like to make sure that it sticks down. Especially if you have a real shiny surface because these wall adhesives are intended to come off. So, you know, they will kind of lift up if you don't seal them in. So you would want to put something down on the shiny can or put some chalk paint on it. Put down your flower and then seal over the top of it if you want it to be permanent. Okay, so, but I'm not doing that because you know I like to reuse my things and you know, this is just for instruction to show you what you can do. So I'm just kind of centering that where it looks like it's standing up straight probably isn't and then I'm going to press it down from the center outward with my fingers to make sure I don't have bubbles trapped in there and if you work from the center outward then it pushes the bubbles to the edge and they'll come out and then I'm pressing down the greenery that's attached so the foliage and I'm just going to go around the bottom of the can there too and I'm going to take my blade and trim off what we don't need on the bottom. Keep your fingers out of the way because these things are sharp. These are good, by the way. Um, a little lightweight in your hand, but they are very sharp and I have found them very, very handy. They came from Dollar Tree. I'm just going around the underside edge and trim that off. And it gives me a cleaner line than it would if I would cut it with scissors. So I'm just telling you here, just reminding you to cover that if you need to. So because this blessed sign here, uh, sticker, is sheer in the background, it's going to go straight on top of this like it belonged in here in the first place. So I'm going to take my little blessed sticker, I'm going to hold that can where I think it would be centered, and then decide where I want to place it. And I like it here a little more toward the bottom. It looks pretty much centered to me, so I'm just going to lay it down gently and press it down. You can certainly use your silhouette or your cricket and make your own little blessed sign or whatever you choose, gather or whatever. You could even use family, something like that, and I'm going to press that down. And there's my pretty little enamel can. I'm going to add one more detail to it before I put in some fall. Um, leaves and decor. Just going to tie that on the bottom, right around the neck. I'm using the silk ribbon, but you could use jute and loop it around a few times. You could use any of the ribbons that you already have from the projects above. And I'm just going to tie that off. Y'all excuse my children, it's summertime and it is wildness going on upstairs. 
just a simple bow here to tie off the top and this looks very farmhouse to me what do you think a little rustic farmhouse for you we've got a bunch of different ways to decorate using wall stickers in this video so I'm just giving you examples of what you might want to use what you maybe could put in there and these are a variety of little picks that came from Hobby Lobby and Dollar Tree and of course by Hobby Lobby I mean Goodwill and then I have these that I decided to use this is like a seeded grass and I'm gonna put these in the top I'm just gonna bend it over so I can use it again and I added some wheat picks that I got from the thrift store as well. And this is how it looks. What do you think about that? I think that's pretty nice. You can definitely get wheat stems for yours too, and you can get them at Dollar Tree. These are uh, dried stems, but you can get the ones that are the plastic kind, and they'll last you for probably ever. These, you have to really baby these real wheat dried stems. <laughs> Calendar but they're worth it. This is from a package of calendars last year. They do have this in the calendars if you're fortunate enough to find them this year, but I think the background is white. This sign that's on top of here uh, also came from the Dollar Tree. This was in the summer collection. You're just going to trace that out, cut it out, and then this will fit right on top of that faux wood round. That's what we're going to call it faux wood round. Sounds fancy. Okay, glue stick. You know me and my glue sticks. I'm going to go over this project thoroughly and then I'm going to lay this down on top. Then start pressing it out from the center outward in all directions and then use my wallpaper smoother to press it down. Okay, take your sandpaper, same thing, go around your edges with your sandpaper and just shear off those edges to make a nice smooth finish. Then we're going to have to have something to attach this down to that little flat basket or paper plate holder or whatever you want to call that thing. I got it from the thrift store so I really don't know what it was originally intended for. We're going to put down our pieces of wire with a little bit of paper so that we can put this on and have a good good grip we don't want anything falling apart so here we go I've let the glue dry and now I'm just lifting those pieces of pipe cleaners up so that I can press it through this little piece of whatever wicker is this wicker cane I'm not sure what it is we're gonna call it a basket. How about that? It's a basket. Then you're just going to twist it down and push it down. Twist and push it down. You wanna lay it flat because you wanna protect your surface when you hang it up. Okay, it already looks fantastic, right? You could leave it just like this. You could go to Dollar Tree and get a $1 pick that's already put together for you. How simple is that? I'm taking a pipe cleaner, but you can certainly use wire or you can use jute, whatever you wanna use and just go ahead and secure this down to that basket right in the top center. All right, flip it over, turn that little knobby piece up so it's out of the way. We don't wanna see that in the front. And then clip it off. The next thing we're gonna do is work on a little bow. This is the same bow that I showed you earlier. I'm showing the same bow in a lot of projects because it seems to be the most easy one for people to understand and replicate. And it's such a simple bow. When you're doing a style that's not real fancy or glamorous, it really does fit into a lot of your decor pieces. All right, so I'm dovetailing the ends. Um, by the way, I have about a foot and a half of this plaid. This came from Dollar Tree. It's not as good a quality as the orange that you're going to see me cut next. This one is some fantastic ribbon. I should have gotten a lot of more of this. And this is leftovers from last year, by the way. I haven't found the new ribbon this year. 
and fold it over and dovetail it. Look how thick this stuff is. This is nice. Very nice ribbon. So I'm going to loop them over like this. Hold it in the center. And then pinch it down. Simple. Use whatever bow technique you like, whatever type of bow you want to do. I'm showing you a simple version to make life a little bit easier. I'm going to do the same thing with the plaid. We want to stack them on top of each other. And I'm going to take a little piece of jute scrap that I have and I'm going to tie it down. Do y'all save your jute too? I save stuff. I save the little hangers that come off of things. I save all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I do. I think that's kind of common for crafters though. All right, you're gonna at least want a double knot in there because you don't want it to come apart when you are trying to fluff it out. And once you get it like you like it, go ahead and take the extra ends of that jute, thread it through the back of that basket, and just tie it right securely on there. And trim off the extra pieces. Now we're going to get the bow fixed right. I'm going to curl the little tails under, cut them shorter if you like. I don't want them to be in the way of my words, so I do trim them in a bit, but I don't think that is in the video. And then to keep these letters where you can see my words, I'm just going to take a little hot glue and then gently rub the leaves into place. This is also a good way to make your picks look a little more high-end when you're using them in signs and in um, other pieces of decor where they're kind of laying against something as you can stretch them out. You know, you get them at Dollar Tree, they've been stuffed in a box. They're kind of, some of them look kind of sad. And you see my sunflowers kind of, kind of sad looking there. We're going to fix that and we're going to fix that greenery so it stands out and it looks nice and crisp. Taking some hot glue and putting it down either on the sign or next to that wicker basket. We're just pressing that down. It's making everything stand apart and stand out. Little drops of glue, stretching it over, pressing it down. You see how the leaves now will stand out a little bit more? That looks more high end, just in my humble opinion. And also, my flower looks kind of sad, so I'm just going to take a pencil and my fingers with a little hot glue just put those layers together so that the top layer will pull upwards on the bottom layer and make it look a lot more together. That's a major improvement, right? Yeah. So now we're going to do just a little something on the bottom. I'm going to take about six inches of this orange and I'm going to do five inches of the black and white. I'm just going to dovetail it and then lay it down. I'm going to do them both. Then I'm going to use some hot glue to attach them together on the bottoms. This is why you want one to be shorter than the other. Put the longer one in the back. This way we can see both layers. And I'm just trying to get an idea of how I want these to be splayed out. Or displayed and I think I want to put them right under the edge now this will be sandwiched between the basket and the back of the sign so I don't want to damage my basket I'm gonna glue this down to the back of that sign and there you go press it down then I'm gonna take some of this bittersweet that came from Dollar Tree I've just pulled those off the branches I'm gonna add a little hot glue and then here and there I'm gonna add the bittersweet it's so pretty and just pop those little bits of fall all over the sign. I'm going to add some to the top as well. And 
until I get the look that I am going for. Just kind of putting them in a triangle shape there. And this is how it looks. One more piece is needed on the bottom, I think. Just to elongate just a little bit, even it out right between those layers. What do you think about project number five? Which one is your favorite? Let's run back over all of the projects and you can tell me which one you like best because I'm really interested to know. I've got some sunflowers here, a variety of ribbons and jute, scissors, glue gun, glue, a frame with a plexiglass front, and a calendar from Dollar Tree. So I've just chosen this black with the sunflowers. Okay, so I'm going to take this frame apart and find placement where I want to put it. And you know, if you want to measure, you can to make sure that it's precise and exactly the same amount, but I don't care about all that. Doesn't matter to me. So I used some adhesive spray from Dollar Tree. Just be careful with that. It can be messy, it can make the page a little damp, and it can tear. I didn't have that problem, so just use my ruler to get the bubbles out. And there's still a few, but I don't mind that. I want to frame it out with a little bit of this jute. Any of you who've seen my videos before know how I feel about the overuse of hot glue. It's very hard to repurpose an item that's covered in glue. So, just want to go ahead and do this with as little as possible. So it's framed around the top and bottom there and then it goes all the way down from the top edge to the bottom edge. I saw a little mark on the paper here. I might have done that when I was getting the bubbles out, but went ahead and used a Sharpie and fixed it. Now you want to take your glass or your plexiglass, whatever you have there, and clean up all the fingerprints and dust. And I want to use my ribbon across, well, I guess you can call that ribbon, and I use my burlap strip across the bottom because I want to make a pocket of sorts. And here I am just trying it out, trying to get an idea of where I want to put this. Okay, this part I use a little more glue. Not a ton, but a little more. I also went ahead and took my stapler and just tacked that down. I want to trim it up. I don't want the back looking bad and I will take the tags off at some point. And then you choose a variety of ribbons that will coordinate with whatever picture that you chose from your calendar. These came from Dollar Tree. Fabric so close to my body to hold it that I keep getting out of the camera range and that's no good for you because you can't see what I'm doing but if you get an idea here I have six inch tails on this bow and I have five inch loops and I'm going to do two loops on each side and rather than stacking it after the bow is made I went ahead and chose to wrap it all at one time so I have two layers here in my hands one green and one black and white um, checkered When I finish making those loops, I'm going to measure the length of the tail. If you see the black strip down there, I'm measuring that to make sure I get the right length. And then I'm taking this zip tie and securing my bow together. So this is what it looks like before it is fluffed. And I've decided I wanna add a little burlap to the top. So I'm just making a simple um, two loop bow for the top. You can almost see what I'm doing there. And I cut the tail short on this one. That one is going to be tied off with a long piece of jute. And then I'm going to use that same piece of jute once it's tied down to wrap around the other bows.
get a double knot there so it doesn't come loose. I aggressively fluff my bows, so I want to be sure that I don't pull anything loose in the process. Okay, so around the middle and between the tails with the jute, and I'm going to give that a couple of knots. And then trim off this excess. And I'll use that jute to tie around the pocket that I've made on the bottom. After, of course, I fluff my bow. Just going to dovetail here. Makes the ends look a little bit neater. You can cut it at a slant or whatever you choose to do. What do you think about it so far? Pretty good? Okay, so here I am just tying it on one side and I'm going to use the other side for the flowers. I'm going to trim them off so I don't have too much stem to fold up. It makes a lot of bulk, and I don't want that. I chose these colors because they match pretty closely to what's already in the picture. I'm just going to tuck those in there and a little bit of extra greenery. Okay, so now that I know how I want it, I'm going to wire these together. You can use floral wire or you can use um, a zip tie or a little piece of jute cord, whichever one works best for you. See, I changed my mind about that little piece of wire. This just seems to be the easiest for me. Like I said, I have small hands and it's hard for me to grasp a big bunch like that and try to tie it without dropping it and you know it just makes it easier and that's all it is to it I'm just going to tuck it in there and I'm going to use a little floor wire to hold it shut and it is perfectly done I hope you like it I hope you try to do something like this yourself because it was easy and thrifted and inexpensive I'd love for you to subscribe. I have lots more. If you have any comments, please put them below. I'd love to hear input. If you have any suggestions for videos, I'd be Follow happy to Follow me on Twitter, Pinterest, and, and Instagram. I thank you so much for watching. I am going to choose some paint. I do change this out shortly. I've got two drawer pulls. I have some white chalk paint and a sponge brush. Some of this beautiful fabric from Dollar Tree and this little piece of framed art, which I think came from Dollar General. I'm also going to be using Mod Podge for this project. I'm going to start off by taking the screws out of the handles. And these are like a matte black, but I decided to use some of this rich espresso. It's slightly metallic instead of the spray paint. I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to put these handles down to make it easier for them to paint. These will peel up very easily after your paint is dry and you won't have to worry about getting paint all over your hands. So I'm going to add a little bit down here on my scrap cardboard. I'm going to offload a good bit of that paint and then kind of give it a, a dry brush with the stencil brush. I'm going to go back and forth just like this all the way over the top, underneath, and around the bottom. And this is how it will look. And we're gonna put it aside and let it dry. So here's this beautiful fabric. It's a different print that I used in my other sunflower video, which I will have linked. But I think it's still a really great um, summer or late summer sunflower print. We're gonna take this apart. It easily pushes out, the backing does. I'm going to take off the tag and take off the hanger. Oh, I love it when it peels off easily. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so now I'm just going to put a little of my chalk paint on here. It's getting thick. I've had it a while and it is really getting thick. It's time for me to get some more. I'm just going to add this on here. 
I only do one coat because I just want to have it thick enough that it will make the white on the fabric pop. I don't want the brown to show through at all. I'm going to take that same Rich Espresso, same brush, and just kind of lightly brush over the outside of this brown frame. Just so that's a little more cohesive with the handles we're using. I think it gives it a really pretty look. Now you can see that the white is very crisp on this background. So I'm just measuring off as much as I'm going to need. I don't like to waste because I like to do as many projects as I can with what I have. I'm going to cut off, add my Mod Podge, and I'm going to do this all the way around, especially on the sides. And then once I get a good coat on there, I'm going to lay my fabric down, pull it, and stretch it out. That's the good thing about fabric. You can just move it around and you won't even have a wrinkle. No ironing necessary. I'm pressing it down on my edges, my corners, and I'm going to take my Mod Podge roller and roll it out to make sure that it is bubble free and that every bit of that fabric is attached down to the backing. So to make it a little more manageable, I'm just, now that I've got it on there, I'm going to go ahead and remove the excess. I'm not going to cut it completely down straight yet. I'm going to add a good thick coat of Mod Podge over the top of that, and I'm going to be sure that I get over the entire thing, including the middle and all of the edges. You'll almost see like, see the white on the outline there? because I want to make sure that that is stuck down nicely. I'm going to prop it up so that it can dry. It takes a while for the Mod Podge to dry, and once it is dry, you can go ahead and trim it down to the size of the backing. This doesn't have to be perfect because, again, it's going to be underneath the, the frame, and you won't be able to see any rough edges. Unless, of course, that kind of thing bothers you, then, you know, you do what you need to do. You could also definitely sand this, but the the cutting is a little bit quicker when you don't have to be perfect. So then the frame will sit back on it like this. I'm going to flip it over and thankfully it just pretty much pushes back down into that frame or that outer ring. It just pops back down in there. And then of course just to make sure everything stays together and doesn't come loose I'm going to take my Gorilla Glue in my little glue gun here and just go around and kind of seal off the edges. I'm going to be using this as a decorative piece and I do not intend to put anything heavy on here or lift it by the handles, nothing like this. This is just for decoration. So I think it's great already, but I wanna add these handles. My handles and the, the framed art, they came from the thrift store. And then, of course, the fabric came from Dollar Tree. So I'm going to add them to each end. And it's easy to center these because I have a line in the middle. So you can kind of see where it goes. And then press them down and let them dry. Again, I'm not lifting with those handles. So I'm not concerned about whether or not it stays down permanently. Totally okay with it. The next one is a sunflower pitcher. So these little pictures come from the Dollar Tree. And they come in a variety of colors, but this is the one that I found. I'm gonna use some Spanish moss chalk paint. I love this beautiful green. I have flat paintbrush and a variety of ribbons. I'm also gonna have some jute and this piece of fabric. Now, first off, I'm gonna cover up this beautiful terracotta and I'm covering it because it doesn't really match what I am doing here. Otherwise, I love the color. I'm going to take this flat brush, dip into my paint, and just drag along where the paints overlap so that you can see that terracotta underneath the white. I'm starting at that line right above it. And I'm going to do this all the way around just to get a nice clean line. If you don't have um, the dexterity, you know, if you don't have a nice um, smooth hand, feel free to tape it off. I don't really care if mine is completely straight. I'm not worried about that because, again, rustic. Rustic saves me. It's my best excuse for being sloppy. I'm going to go up the handle and all around just like where the paint was before. And I do two coats because the first coat is not thick enough. So here it is, wet. 
and I'm going to dry it down. I know that I want to be doing some decoupage on here, so I'm going to choose this little flower, but you can use anything you want. You can use a whole strip of fabric or a square or a circle or whatever you like, but I don't mind the fussy cutting because these little scissors that I have make it a pretty easy job. So I'm just going to kind of trim around the flower and you know if you want to do this and you don't want to trim it you don't have to trim all around it you can just make a circle around it no biggie but once it's all cut out this is how she looks not perfect and I'm fine with that I'm gonna take some Mod Podge and a nice clean brush and put this on the spot where I know I want my little applique to be or my little fabric piece to be I'm gonna be sure I get my leaf in there too so I'm just going to add it right there. And I like that one leaf is kind of hanging down over. And it looks good that way to me. So now I'm just going to go around my edges and kind of seal it off. And then brush from the inside outward. That way if there are any bubbles, they come right out. You can go under the edges. You can flip your little leaves up to make sure that you get under there. Just like that. And it will flip right back down. Now because this is matte, I'm going to go ahead and cover the entire thing so it has the same finish when it's dry as the applique does. And this is how it looks when it is all dry. And I think it's cute. This would be very cute on a, a little coffee bar or on a tiered tray. Now I have two options for the bows because for some reason when I was doing this project, I could not get the bow to come out the way I saw it in my mind. So I started off by overlapping two gold ribbons and one of these beautiful little ribbons from Dollar Tree with the, the white background and the sunflowers. I kind of overlapped them and then wrapped them around where the little seam was between the colors and tied it off there. Thank you so much, 80,000 views on my videos. Thank you, thank you to all of you who are viewing today. So this is my first option. But for some reason, it, like I said, it just wasn't coming out in my head. Coming through my hands the way I saw it in my head. So I gave it a few different tries. I'm going to take one piece of gold, one piece of floral, and one piece of jute. And I'm going to make a little shoelace bow with this. Just going to make the rabbit ears wrap around each other, poke it in the hole, pull it, and then adjust the little pieces here. And I was a little bit happier with this look and I decided to put it up there on the handle instead of wrapping it around where it's kind of in the middle and I think I like this better which way did you like best around the middle or around the top of the handle I think this looks better considering we're gonna put a little bit of greenery in there and it looks a little more balanced you'll see just a second so this is what I was comfortable with now these beautiful picks come from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to cut off a little bit of it and stick it down in the jar and voila. That's the way. All right, this I little like. tray came from Dollar Tree. It's like a little jewelry dish or a candle riser or something. I'm going to use a variety of paints. I've got, I think this is just a, just brown and that's going to be the center of my sunflower. So I'm going to go around the middle of it with the brown paint I do two coats of this by the way and dry it in between with my little dryer just like this I'm not trying to stay in the lines or anything like that this beautiful sunflower yellow this is a gorgeous gorgeous yellow it's a lighter color if you saw my last sunflower video then you saw the technique I used on the hanging little sunflower decor piece and it's kind of about the same idea here I'm just gonna put down this color first go all the way around from the edge of the brown all the way out and by the way I do paint the bottom of this later on because it looked white and I didn't like it so I wanted it all to be nice Wanted to give it a good rich look so now I'm gonna dry this layer I'm gonna take a little bit of this this is a bright yellow. Now, I don't know exactly what color it is. Forgive me, I've put the bottle away, but I'm mixing a little bit of that sunflower yellow with it. And I am going to take a new brush here. 
and I'm going to pull that out. So starting in the center, I'm just going to pull it out, pull it out, and up. I'm not paying too much attention to the raised areas on the sunflower. I'm not real concerned about that. As you can see, I'm blending it out into the next layer because I'm going to be blending those colors together a little bit with a dry stencil brush. So this is what you see me doing now. I'm kind of flicking it outward and going in a circular motion so that I kind of blend that middle layer into the outer layer. And this is how it looks once that's accomplished. I'm going to take this little candle holder. You can get the ones at Dollar Tree. Mine was thrifted, but you can use whatever kind you want. I started off with white. And then as soon as I got this white on there, I thought, you know what? It would look more like a stem if it was green. So I quickly dried it and took some of that moss paint, that Spanish moss, and then went all over here with a good two coats. It's kind of hard sometimes to get it to stick on plastic. Now, I have got some black paint here, and I think this is the pavement, pavement color. I'm going to take a very fine pointy brush and then put some black dots in here. I do this because this looks like sunflower seeds. A little more realistic, right? So I do that all over there. And now it looks like the center of a sunflower. I'm gonna use a little bit of E6000. And I'm gonna use some hot glue. You definitely wanna use some E6000 or some other type of a glass friendly adhesive if you are going to be using, doing something like this, this type of project. So see right now the bottom is white, but I'm gonna fix it. I'm gonna press that down, let that glue set up. Now it's nice and strong. And I decided, yeah, we need to go ahead and do that bottom. So I just took that same sunflower yellow and went all over that with that same stencil brush I had already used. And this is how it is going to look. You'll see at the end when I say This is so easy. So I found these beautiful stickers here and they came from Dollar Tree. And this frame, it is a four by four and it just has two piece, pieces of glass in the inside. I took my plastic off and now you twist these little pieces here. It's gonna lift the back out and then you can get your two pieces of glass out. One piece has a tiny bit of adhesive holding this paper in place. So I'm just gonna pull that off, get it off with my fingers as best as I can and then clean that up with some alcohol and a nice clean microfiber wipe. Now I'm gonna lay down my glass here and start applying my stickers and whatever style and fashion that is in my little head. And I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't have to do the same thing anybody else does. You know, make it your own. So I love the outdoors. I lo love sunflowers. And I'm doing a little something different for you guys. So at the end of this video, after the final reveal, I did a little clip of my yard and walking around my yard and what the beautiful weather is like today and walking to the lake so I even got my blueberry tree in there so if you want to stay tuned to the very end you'll get to see all of that goodness and I would love for you to get to know me better and get to know you better by giving you some little you know tidbits of my life along the way if that's something that interests you be sure to let me know in the comment section and I appreciate it very much okay so you can cut these pieces off to kind of customize this however you like it. I wanted my sunflowers that I put down to have little stems. So I just made them out of a piece that I had cut down smaller. So now they connect and don't those look like they were intended to be that way. Love it. So I'm not gonna use those other petals there. I'm just going to use it just like this. I like that. And now I can put down my bottom glass. Gonna flip this over and put it back in. Put the back frame piece on and then close down those little clasps and then that little piece of artwork is complete. I've got two options for you um, that I'm going to show you that you can do if you would like to put some type of a backing on here or what it would look like if you leaned it against something. So this is just a placemat that I have but if you wanted some type of a backing to fit it that looks really pretty. And you could also use like a piece of colored crafting paper or construction so paper. So I'm going to use some Blossom White. 
I'm going to use this little tray and I got a pack of like 12 of these. I'm going to use some black and I'm going to use this sticker pack. All right, so I'm going to take that paint and just put a dot in the middle of my tray, which I have already spray painted white with just one coat. And I'm going to go around this tray to make it look like a little chalkboard. I'm just pressing down. That's like a round tip brush. And I'm just pressing down and dragging it around the edges and turning that tray to kind of help me. And I did put a little too much paint on, but I scraped it off and put it back in the bottle because I'm cheap like that. No, I'm thrifty like that. After it is dry, it's going to look like this. Doesn't have to be perfect because a chalkboard isn't either. I'm going to pick this sticker and place it down in the middle. And it's a little 3D stickers, really cute. I'm going to press it down and I think it looks fantastic on here. So this is what it's going to look like before I put my antiquing wax on it. I'm going to use another flat stencil brush. I'm going to offload a lot of that and then I'm just going to start kind of flicking it around the edges because the edges of this little tray are embellished. They're kind of raised and I wanted to kind of bring that out and make it match a little bit better to what's going on on the sticker on the inside of the tray. So that's what I'm doing here and I'll give you a look at that so now you can see that you can do it either way. A little bit of light distressing or you could just leave it plain. Very cute for a tear tray I think. Here are our projects. Now see I put my little bird there and it looks like a little bird bath doesn't it? I think that is precious. And the tray here turned out very nicely. I just have everything propped up here so you can see how it would look staged. You can see right through that frame onto the backing. I love that. Which one of you, these do you like best? I would love it if you would subscribe to this channel and become part of our thrifty artistic family. This it looks like a pedestal for maybe a sign. This butterfly, it's like a resin butterfly wall hanger thingy. And then I have some embroidery hoops, two sunflowers, and a garland here. Just a little section of garland and my Waverly wax and a wet wipe. I'm going to start by taking all of this apart. Now the only thing that wasn't thrifted in this project was my Waverly antiquing wax. Everything else came from Goodwill. So I'm going to take the hoops off. I'm just going to use the inner rings and first we're going to give them some color. They're fine as they are. If you don't want to color them you don't have to. If you'd rather paint them you can do that too. But I am just going to add some on the wet wipe so we get a light, nice stain and go all the way around the inside, the outside, and the edges of this ring. See the difference in the color? It's subtle, but it matters. So I'll do the other ring too, set them aside to let them dry, and now I'm going to do the butterfly. This white color just, or lack of color, just doesn't have any dimension to it. So by adding some of this wax, we're going to get some shadowing down in the lower sections of the details of this butterfly. And I want all of these to match, so I'm going to use the same wet wipe and go over the high spots on this little pedestal. I'm going to wipe it on and then I'm going to be wiping it back off. This is going to, instead of looking like it's dirty, it's just going to give it more of an aged look. And I like that. It changes that bright white to a little bit of a creamier color as well. And it fits into my rustic decor perfectly. And that's the idea when we get thrifts, right? Is to be able to find something that appeals to us and then make it our own. So we're going to do the same thing here. Don't want to wipe on the inside, just wipe over the top and look how it just settles in the cracks. All right, so we're going to set that aside to dry and we're going to attach these two hoops together. Just going to add a little hot glue and attach them to what will be the top of the topper to give it some more security and to give us some more space to put our butterfly later. I'm going to use some jute and wrap it around where we have them fixed together. And go around and around and around. You can use ribbon for this um, or if you use some type of a super glue you might not have to use this at all. 
I'm gonna add some hot glue, just press that rope down into it, that jute, and then I'll trim off what I don't need. Protect your fingers here. And then I'm gonna just clamp it. I love you guys. I hope you know I love you to the moon and back. Enjoy your coffee break. Okay, so once the butterfly is dry, I'm just gonna get an idea of where I want him to be on there. And I'm going to move on to putting this ring down on the pedestal. So we have a back and a front, it appears, on this pedestal. And I want this to go to the back because when I put my florals on, that little metal piece will be there for me to attach some things to. So I'm using my screw to press a hole in this wood, just a little dent here, to give me an idea of where I want it to be centered. I'm gonna add some of my Gorilla Hot Glue to hold it in place. It's gonna make it easier when I drill the screw in. Be very careful, use a slow speed because you will split this wood if you are not very, very careful. You can use a little finishing nail or something there if you want to. So I've cut this apart into little pieces, makes it a little more manageable. I've cut the stems off of the back of my flowers and I've kept one of the leaves. Now's the fun part, when you get to just play around and arrange. So now I can put one of those pieces right there on that little metal piece on the top to help hold it in place and secure a piece down to the pedestal. I think this is silver dollar eucalyptus. I think that's what that's called. And then I'm gonna start placing my flowers in to make sure they stay where they need to stay. I'm gonna add a leaf in here just so that I have some of that foliage that originally came with those flowers. And then push them in here and there until I get them as full as I like. You can use a little bit of glue to fix it to keep things from shifting around too much if you want to. And then my glue gun was sticking to this piece. I left it in here to show you it's craziness. It kept sticking and pulling away, sticking and pulling away. So once I got it straightened out, I decided to go ahead and add the other sunflower on the base instead of up there on the edge. I'm gonna add a little bit more greenery just to kind of, you know, extend it out a little bit. Move it around where I got the glue on the frame. And then just go ahead and cover up the back over here, the hardware, nobody has to see that. Then I'm just gonna push the backing out a little bit so that it will fit, the butterfly will fit up there over the frame. Don't worry, I'm gonna flip it here for you. And I'm going to flood it with glue. Make sure that that butterfly doesn't go anywhere. Like I mentioned before, um, there's Gorilla Glue in my glue gun right now. So I'm just going to put a lot of it on there and on that jute section too. And then I'm gonna use some clamps to hold it in place and it's going to dry like that. I'm checking to make sure it's cool and that's been several minutes so you don't stick your finger in hot glue. Once it's cool, I am going to move on to the next part. I'm gonna cut seven inch pieces of this beautiful thrifted ribbon that I just very recently picked up. Love this. And I'm gonna cut three pieces. I'm gonna crisscross and put one right in the middle. We're gonna make a simple little embellishment or bow if you wanna call it that, although there are no loops. You could still call it a bow, I think. I'm gonna take a little of my jute cord and I'm gonna put it around the middle, flip it over on the table, and then give it a few knots. This is going to hold everything tightly in place. And if your ribbons flip over on, you just push them back down. You can dovetail your ends if you like, and then decide where you want to put that bow. I decided that I like it here on the bottom. So since my cord is still there, my jute cord, I'm just gonna twist it around, poke it through the flowers, around the back of the pedestal, and tie it down. And this is how it's gonna look. Now this one is one we already had in the house. It belonged to my mother-in-law and it um, has seen better days. I think it was used for potty training probably for the kids, um, lots of grandbabies. So I'm going to give it a new life because I think that it is precious that she had it and I think we can fix it up. So after it's clean, I'm gonna have some Mod Podge, I'm gonna have my fabric here. I'm also gonna have some white chalk paint, which you will see in a moment. 
You can see the color underneath here, so I'm just gonna trim off what I need, and then I am going to paint it with this plaster chalk paint, just on the top. This is gonna make that fabric pop. You see the difference there? It really makes it pop. So I've already put my layer of Mod Podge down and I'm pressing this down with my hands and then I'm going to roll it with my Mod Podge roller. I'm gonna go all around the edges really well. Then I'm gonna go back over it with the Mod Podge and lay a good coat down all over the edges, all over the top and all around. But I'm not going to do the sides of the top. We're gonna have that taken off. You see here how I did it? It's gonna take a little while to dry, but leave it until it's completely dry. You can even wait till the next day. And I'm gonna take a sanding sponge with a coarse grit, and I am going to start shearing off the fabric we don't need. If you get enough of your Mod Podge on here, this will make the edges almost like paper, so it's a lot easier for that to come off. If you don't have sandpaper, you can always take your scissors or something like that and just trim it off. So I'm gonna do this around all of my edges. And look how pretty this is, so cute. I'm just gonna go back around and make sure there's no little frays here on the sides. It comes off easily with the sander. And then to distress this, I'm gonna take a really heavy um, sandpaper that goes with my hand sander, but it's raining so I can't do it. So I'm just gonna use it by hand and I'm just going to take nicks and chunks of paint off I'm just gonna go down to the wood surface underneath. There's actually like a, a cream color, there's a white, and then the wood on the bottom. I'm gonna go around there, all the way around the edges that would normally get wear, and then using a dry cloth for this, I'm gonna take some of that wax, rub it in, and just lay it on thick. I'm gonna put a good coat in there. I'm gonna focus on all those scratches and just push it down into the wood areas. If it bothers you that the bottom is not, you know, on your projects is not finished, you can go ahead and do that. But for this video, I didn't feel the need. And this is gonna be used on my porch as a plant candelabra, candle stand, candle stick, whatever you wanna call it, candle holder. And then two of these little, I guess they're like a hard plastic chargers. Mine were all thrifted, all of that was thrifted. So be sure that your objects are clean and because my trays were very rustic looking. I'm going to make sure that I use that same effect on the piece that's going to be holding those pieces together. So I'm gonna give it a, a good dusting with my dry brush. Once I get it the way I like it, it's practically already dry, I'm going to use some super glue. Mine is the Fix Haul from Dollar Tree. You can use whatever type you have and a little bit of hot glue. That's gonna give you quick hold and long-term hold. I'm gonna get above it, look at the center. Then I'm going to go ahead and get ready to put down the next one. So easy, put that aside. This is what all these projects were inspired by, the beautiful fabric. I'm going to use this piece of thrifted wood, this piece of scrap from my husband. I have some thrifted and some store-bought trim. We're not gonna Mod Podge this one. I'm gonna give you another option if you don't have Mod Podge. So we're gonna wrap this like a present. Wrap it over, make sure you have enough to go all the way around. Then you're going to hot glue, just a little, little edge under there. Fold it over, make sure that your edges are nice and straight. And ideally it would end somewhere near the bottom so you don't notice it. And then pull that down and glue it on. Simple enough, right? Now this is how you're gonna fold your ends to make them nice and neat. This is how we fold packages in our family. I don't know, not everybody does this, but this is how we have always done it. And it works with fabric too, so why not? All right, so I know that I'm gonna have that folded over, so I'm gonna add a little hot glue there and just press that little angle right into it. You see, I'm gonna press it down and then push that little angle over into it. So now it looks like a little flap, like an envelope flap. I'm gonna put glue all over that little flap there, except on the very edge. And I'm just gonna roll my fingers over so that it pushes it down, and then I'll go right under the edge and press it out. So simple. Okay, so now I'm going to take my joyful sign, and this is just a wall cling from Dollar Tree. And I am going to 
put it down in the middle of that sign. You can use any type of sticker. You can use your Cricut, whatever you want to use, just to give it some embellishment. But y'all know joy is my favorite word. I cut the end off of joyful too, had the little leaves on it, and I put that on the end of the joy. I think it looks good. And now this beautiful thrifted piece, I am going to use as the base to put our sign on. I'm using hot glue. You can use whatever type of glue you would like to use. You could even screw the bottom in if you want to do that. But I'm going to press it down until it dries. And then you can flip it over on its sign to do some embellishment. So I'm just going to use a little bit of trim here to go around the edge. And I've just chosen the one that I thrifted. It's a braided, uh, like a braided jute, a braided rope. And I'm just going to make sure that I have enough that it meets in the back so I don't have any intersections on the front and pull it and press it down. I'm trying to make a straight line down the center so no glue is gushing out. We want it to look high end. So we don't want all that extra glue all over the place. When I get to the end, I'm gonna press it down and then trim off the excess. Push it back down in that glue. And I'm gonna use a Dollar Tree sticker here just to embellish it. And it looks almost exactly like the fabric from Dollar Tree. That's a cutie, isn't it? Yes. I think to start by making a little embellishment or another bow, if you will. I'm going to be cutting this ribbon into two pieces, and then I'm going to cut a bunch of those trims and some Dollar Tree ribbon into two pieces. And I'm just going to make X's and crisscross them over each other, just like this. Easy enough. You can cut your pieces shorter. You can. Um, dovetail them, you can cut them at angles, whatever you want to do. I'm going to grab that stack, flip it over, and then tie it in the back. Now you'll see my ribbon flip over, but watch how easy it is to fix it. Don't get frustrated if that happens. Just push it back down and then tighten your, see there? Push it down and then tighten it back up. No problem. And then you're going to fluff it out. And you know, at this point too, you could also trim it. I'm also going to be looking at the center which I'm using a sticker from that pack. Same one, that other little, the other little sticker that we had. See there? Nice. All right, now to start with the flower. This lid is going to be the center. And I chose these two yellow colors because they match the fabric. I'm also gonna use white and a couple of different paintbrushes. So I'm gonna start off by using white to put on this candle holder. This is like a tin, like a metal candle holder. I'm gonna go, uh, almost looks like a tart pan, doesn't it? We'll go all the way around here. You wanna be sure you do this because the pan is really dark and you want your yellows to show up nice and bright when you make your flower. So I'm going to start off with the lightest yellow that I have here. And I am just going to color what will be the petals of our flower. So all around these little pinched or grooved pieces, pleated, tucked, whatever you wanna call it, all the way around there. And you don't have to worry about doing this neatly. It's going to be all over the bottom, but we're going to cover that up. Then I'm going to start with my next color. And right before you get to the yellow, I'm going to dip in and drag the brush up. And when you do that, it almost gives it an ombre type effect, a feathery type effect, which matches or simulates the same effect on the inside of the sunflower. Doesn't have to be perfect. Once it is dry, this center is going to be glued onto it. Be sure you got all the wax off your candle holders because they will not stick if they have wax on them. So clean them up really well. Put a good chunk of glue on there, put it in the middle, and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. And then I'm gonna press it down. Now you can embellish the center if you'd like. This is just a, um, a window cling. You could use a glue stick to put that on there if you wanted. You could use your Cricut if you wanted to do that. You could use any stickers you want, but I'm gonna leave the center plain. I'm going to use a curtain ring, take the screw out of it, and I'm going to get some more of this beautiful ribbon. It's so rustic looking to me, I just love it. I'm going to pull it through the center, and we're going to use this to make a hanger. A little glue to attach the two on the bottom, and then we'll flip that flower over and glue it on the back. You could leave it like this if you wanted to, but I think I want to add my pretty little bow. And look how cute that's going to look right there on the top. 
So I'm going to put it right over the ribbon that's already there. And fluff that little bow. You know how we do on this channel. We fluff it. And that's how it is going to look. Here it is, all fixed up and staged for you. Never mind the clip on the back. I just used that to hold it in space. I believe in you. I hope that you believe in yourself. We're all crafty and you can definitely do these. We're gonna start off with one of these floral blocks. You can get them from the Dollar Tree. I have some thrifted greenery. This is sort of a fall colored greenery. I have some pigs that were thrifted some little daisies and some sunflowers, a little pick from the Dollar Tree, an embroidery hoop, and I'm just going to take my rotary cutter and just start slicing through with the plastic on to keep it a little bit cleaner. It's all going to come off in a moment. Once I get my mark all the way around, I'm going to take my metal ruler and of course, after removing the plastic, I'm just going to slice right through that. Then I'm going to take the two blocks and put them side by side and push them down onto this wooden embroidery hoop. This is going to put a little trench or a little mark in the back, ideally. I'll turn it over and press a little bit harder. And then in order to get this to stick, I'm gonna put some glue along the back, a good bit. It's gonna have a lot of weight from the flowers that are gonna be on it. And I'm just gonna take some scrap paper and put that on the back and just use it as a bandage. Then I'm gonna take some floral wire, wrap around one side. You don't have to squeeze this too tightly. You don't wanna cut into that foam any further than you already have. And you're just gonna make a little knot there on the end Twist it, lay that down so you don't poke yourself, wrap it around to the end and back around. Put those two pieces of the ends together and then lay those flat. You can cut them down if you need to. So I'm gonna start greening this and I'm going to just use my clippers and start cutting off these all the way down to the base. These come in a variety of lengths. So I've got some shorter ones, some taller ones, some that are a little bit thicker. And I'm just going to start placing those around on the sides. This is gonna be, I guess you could call it a half wreath. It's not gonna go all the way around. Most of the florals are gonna be on the bottom half or the bottom three quarters of the wreath. I'm gonna start placing them around kind of at a slant there in the sides. And then build upward. Keep applying those in there. You have that wire so that kind of helps hold them in place too. Gives them a little extra support. And I'm putting this, these in at an angle and facing either to the right or to the left. We won't have any coming straight up. That's going to be where we're going to put our flowers. So I'm going to cut this little remnant of a pick and just randomly put these in. These are not going to be in a pattern because there are three so I can't evenly put them on the sides. And you will see me moving some things around in this wreath. I do this a lot when I do floral arrangements. I put things down and then if I don't like the way it's looking, I just move it. You can do the same thing. You gotta get it where it looks good to you, how it feels balanced and good to you. So I noticed that some of them were just too long, which was making it look too heavy. So I just pulled it out, give it a little trim to some of those. You push your greenery up just like when you are making a flower arrangement you can push your greenery up toward the flower and then trim them down you'll see me do that with these little flowers I'm just gonna push these up and trim it off then I'm going to start putting in the flowers again with this wreath there's no particular pattern I try to be balanced when I do arranging but you know with cottage core and this my spin on the cottage core is this kind of a funky 70s vibe where there's a lot of 
mushrooms and greens and golds and those types of colors and that kind of a wild look. So I'm just going to keep filling it out around the greenery. I'm starting, of course, on the outsides with the florals just like I did with the greens. And I'm just going to work my way inward and then upward. And you can see kind of how I'm doing this here. And if you have a, a, um, a process that works better for you, feel free to do it that way. You can leave some a little long, cut some a little bit shorter, like you would see them out in nature. So who was around in the 70s? Any of you guys around in the 70s? I know you were, because I know that most of my viewers are actually over 45 years old. Okay, so now I'm gonna take these big, beautiful sunflowers that were thrifted and just place those here and there. I'm not gonna do this you know, in a perfect pattern, like I said before, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna, see I've moved the one off the top, I'm gonna put it over here on the side. I don't want it to look too planned out. One in the middle. And then, another thing that you can do is if you have any florals that still have greenery on them, push that greenery up to the top, even if the flower is gone. You know how sometimes we get them at Dollar Tree and we're missing pieces? Cut that piece off and use the greenery on the pick. You can still use it. Look at these beauties that came from Dollar Tree. These are gorgeous. Amaranthus, is that what it said? I'm just gonna cut these off. Add those in here. This kind of reminds me of like the trolls from way back. You know, the garden gnomes and the trolls from way, way back. The coloring, and it just looks like it could be on a tree stump somewhere. You know, the little fairy house underneath it. Oh, I just love it. I know with cottage core, um, some cottage core decor, you see a lot of pastels and English garden type things, but you also have that woody, mystical feel, and that's what draws me in. You know, I'm still at the heart of everything, uh, a lover of all things rustic, so, um, yeah, this just really feels like, a, if I could call it rustic cottage core, that's how it feels to me. I almost expect to see a little creature peeking out from underneath these flowers. A little frog on a toadstool. Yeah, something like that. Okay, so you know these are plastic and they're on wire, which is bendable. Move your things around, put them where you want them and how you like them. And that's what I'm doing here. Just kind of fidgeting around a little bit and get them exactly where I want them. And so I decided I wanted to add a couple little extras and I had some, a couple of extra pieces of, I think these are mini moms and they're from last year from Dollar Tree. And I wanted to just add that in a little bit too. just here and there. I don't know why, but Bob Ross is just really popping in to my head right now. His little, his little brown, happy afro. I'm really thinking about him right now. This could very well be something that he would paint. Did y'all watch Bob Ross on PBS when you were young? Because I sure did. Yep. Kids think that they found something new when they, they talk about listening to how soothing and calm his voice is. They just don't know. We're so familiar with Bob. Okay, and then we're just going to keep going. Again, like I said before, if there's something in there that you don't like where it's at, it doesn't look right, you look at it from all angles, take it out. Move it. We didn't glue anything in in our florals in here, so you can move it. This is how it looks. What do you think about this? Is this a little too wild for you? Or do you really, are you really feeling the vibes from this? Because I'm certainly, I'm certainly feeling it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Bye.